Hello my friends, how are you doing? It is a beautiful day to work on a portrait. I shot this photo two months ago. Today I will guide you through the process of editing it and through the artistic decisions. Let's get started. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. Now I'm going to open this up in Affinity Photo as a raw file. So let's go here to file and then open recent. You would go to open, but I'm going to open recent so I don't have to go through the folder structure. Here we have the image and when we go to 100%, you're going to realize here that the image is a little bit not so much on the sharp side. The reason for this is that the profile for this lens is not part of Affinity Photo. Affinity is suggesting to use LensFun to import these lens profiles. I have a video link below to show you how to do that very easily. But also the Sigma 24 by 70 2.8 DG DN is not part of that collection. So we have to do this manually. So let's go back here in Affinity Photo. We go to the Detail tab and then we go to Detail Refinement and Radius Amount and just set this up to something that looks good to us. Now you have to look out at this point to not overdo it. So everything still looks natural. So the hair looks nice and soft and doesn't look like metal shavings. Look also here on the skin detail and refine it to a degree where you think, well, that's good enough but I haven't overdone it. Okay, when you're done with that, I'm not gonna do any other adjustments here. And what I'm going to do to actually adjust the values here is to use Nick Collection Viveza 3, but we are going to do some editing in Affinity Photo afterwards. So I wanna show you some of the benefits of that. So first of all, we have all these sliders over here that make it very easy. So here you can see, I go through these adjustments, just looking at the picture. They give me some very, very nice results. You can see how how the face is coming out, the details are there. I can also recover the highlight up here beautifully. You can see here the skin is coming back. That's all very nice and very, very easy just by moving these sliders. Let's put down a little bit here the mid-tones and then also up here you have structure. You can get some more detail. The contrast is maybe a little bit too high. Let's bring this back. Uh, let's actually as good like that. Let's see for the structure here. We don't want to overdo that again. So that already looks pretty nice. Now here's something you can do specifically in Viveza and Affinity Photo doesn't have that at all. You have these control points here and I can set it here, for example, on this red area and make it really large. And then I can go here to the mask and I can now, let's go to full here. You can see this is selecting only that area. And then we have here luminance and chrominance. So I can even make this more specific on what kind of area I want to affect here. This is next level, really fine refinement of what you can do with your picture. And you can see here these red values, they are just a little bit over the top. So now that I have made this control point, I can simply bring the saturation down in these areas. You can see here now the red area is or these red values are not so much in our face. Now let's go here and do some more adjustments here before we do a little bit of color grading also, which you can do in Viveza 3 with a little bit of secret sauce. So I'm going to create two control points here for the eyes. So one here, let's make this very small just for the eye area like this is okay. And then let's go here and just give it a bit more contrast. And then let's see, maybe also a little bit more structure. Don't overdo it, just very, very lightly. The reason for that is if you overdo it, it looks like an alien with super bright, shiny eyes. You don't want to have that. Then hold the Alt key and drag this point to the second eye. So now you have simply copied these adjustments over. And now you can see that the eyes are brighter than before and actually look at us in a very nice way. Also here in the ear area, I feel like this could use a little bit more contrast. So let's go here, make another adjustment here, reduce that like so. Again, you can see when I have my mask on, this is actually only affecting the area of brightness and color that I'm putting this on. So this is really, really useful. Okay, 
Let's go here again. I want to have down here, we have the controls for these control points. Let's reduce the brightness here a little bit and then maybe give it a bit more contrast over here and maybe also reduce a little bit of the saturation like so. And so you can see now the ear just looks a little bit nicer than before. It's a little bit darker, so that's pretty good. We can also move this point still around and make it smaller if we want to. So yeah, you can see how very easy it is to do these things. Let's look down here on the jacket. This actually looks nice. I'm happy with that. We could maybe bring out these details here a little bit more. So let's create another point here and then simply push up the shadows here a little bit. You can see how this makes these areas here a little bit brighter. So that's very nice. Let's zoom out here a little bit, fill. Um, that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. All right, all right. Let's go on here. Next point. What we want to do here is I want to create a point that adjusts all of the red values here. And this is where I am doing a little bit of the color grading. So you can see here again, when we go here to the mask, this is adjusting these red areas. Now I want to have less of the face. So let's move this point a little bit more back here. And then we can adjust the chrominance. So this is actually adjusting mostly these red values, not so much the face, but just a little bit the face too. That's okay. Good. So now what I'm going to do here is again with these adjustments for the point, I can play with red, green, blue, and also the hue down here. So we can adjust this as you can see here, like so. Reduce the red a little bit reduce the blue a little bit like so that's already good let's play a little bit with the hue here like so that is very nice i want to move this around here to different areas of the image to see the impact so that's pretty good let's desaturate this a little bit and make it a little bit darker oh yes this is good you can see how when this is darker we have more attention to the face. So that's very nice, like so. Okay, cool. Now we are setting a second point. This is as, as big as this point goes, by the way. Let's make a second point down here on the jacket. Make it big again. And now look at this. I went move this up here a little bit. Here we have again our selection. You can see the darker areas, also the shadows down here, also the shadows back here, and also the darker areas of the tattoo in the face. So this is a form of mask you create in seconds and can then make an adjustment for these shadow areas. This is how easy that is. This is why I really, really enjoy working with that because, well, it is just very good and you stay in the flow. Let's, let's reduce the red here and add some blue to that. Not too much blue though. Let's see. Let's have a look here for the green values. Mm, let's reduce them a little bit. Play a little bit more with these values. That's pretty okay. Some more of the blue values like so. Let's have a look here at the hue. So that is good. Let's maybe also reduce the saturation here a little bit. Let's see. Like that. Okay, pretty cool. Look how much more character we have and how much more this image is now separated because the shadows and the brighter parts look different because the red parts and the bluer parts or darker parts are separated from the color contrast because red and blue are a very nice contrast in color. And see how easy this was to adjust from the before and after and how nicely we got out the details. Now let's click. So this is getting over into Affinity Photo. Let's do the cropping next so we can do the vignette on top of that. Let's go here with unconstrained maybe. And then I want to have a lot um, closer of a crop like this, for example. So we get a nice close up of this beautiful face with all the tattoos on there. There we go. That is pretty good. Okay, very nice. I'm happy with that. And then now we need a vignette because we have these bright details and also want to have more focus on the center. So let's go here. And then actually over here and create a vignette like this, like so. Let's make this dark 
then reduce the hardness, push up the scale like so. That is pretty nice. And you can see how this focuses everything on the center. So that's great. Good. Then up here, as you can see, we have some stray hairs. We can fix this with our in-paint brush. And this again is where Affinity Photo absolutely shines by these quick fixes here. So that is really perfect with that software. Actually, I have created a new layer. You need to go to current layer and below and then just adjust it like this. There we go. You can see how easily Affinity Photo is fixing these little stray hairs here that we want to remove. Doesn't have to be super perfect because we want to have this a little bit rough. So that is actually okay. And actually, you know what? In this situation, what I want here is a little bit more noise. So we can do that by adding noise here. And this just adds some grunge to the image and makes it a little bit more um, a little bit more analog looking. You can see here now we have a little bit of that noise structure here. Sometimes you don't want noise, sometimes you want noise. In this case, I feel like I want to have it. And then actually I'm going to go in here, adjustment and then color balance and play a little bit around with this. So first of all, let's go to the shadow colors here and adjust this a little bit more. Push in a little bit more blue. Let's see with the tint here go like this. Then let's go for the midtones here. Play around with these values here like so. And so you see these finer touches actually are pretty cool also to do in Affinity Photo. Let's go for the highlights here and maybe warm them up a little bit like this. And there we go. Look at that. What kind of beautiful result we have created. And for the adjustments of the lights and the shadows and all these kind of Finer adjustments, you see that Viveza 3 is really magically fast. And then fixing the image, cropping the image, adding a vignette, Affinity Photo is perfect for that. So they are a super awesome tech team. Let me know what you think in the comments. Leave a like if you enjoyed that and see you in my next tutorial. Bye. Mm -hmm.